Hey everyone, well it's been a long time since we've done an Inside Digital Foundry video but today, well today's just a little bit special. It's our last day in our existing offices before we begin our move to Gamer Network's pristine new state-of-the-art facilities down in Brighton, UK. So we thought we'd show you where we've been working for the last couple of years in this, yes, the Digital Foundry office tour. And in addition to that, well, by necessity, we've recently refitted our workstation PCs in order to make 4K video a bit more easy to deal with and edit and whatnot. We'll be showing our PCs, the hardware we use to get the job done, the kit that's required to pump out as much 4K video as we do at the pristine quality that we kind of demand. So, well, expect plenty of messiness and general disorder, a factor of the moving chaos, and the fact that we're generally untidy anyway. And let's begin by taking a look at this set from a different angle. Now, Tom's gonna to be helping me out here for the office tour, but as you can see, well, I'm talking to the camera and indeed reading all of this from an auto cue, which is actually some reflective glass and an old iPad that's now so slow, it doesn't really work for anything more than slowly scrolling text. So yeah, quite a bit of smoke and mirrors here, like this bench, for example. So yeah, back in the day, we were looking for a height adjustable bench and uh, yeah, the problem with that was they were massively expensive. So this is a, a bit of wood from Ikea and uh, some trestles from Ikea and uh, some additional struts there, which we bought from Amazon. And uh, they kind of like make the whole table higher. But yes, that's kind of like uh, reality number one. It's not really a bench, it's a bit of wood. Um, a couple of things here to talk about. Uh, this is... Um, our audio recording setup. So we've got this Zoom recorder here which can synchronize radio transmissions that come into it from these uh, receiver boxes. Tom and I here, hello Tom. Hello. Uh, we've got the uh, transmitters on and obviously lapel mix there. Kind of a massively over-engineered solution really uh, when uh, John just uses a lapel mic into his smartphone. So I'm gonna come out from my hovel, from my, from my corner Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so let's, well, this is just a general storage area here. It's uh, seen worse times, that's for sure. <laughs> it's seen, well, if you can imagine this entire table covered with boxes, uh, we've kind of rationalized it recently, but we have this sort of surfeit of motherboards that keep cropping up. It's also worth mentioning, uh, you may see a lack of lighting in this office in general because yes. we did need to have a very uh, basic lighting so that our actual lights would look okay, you know, when uh, filming. Yeah. And also product shots, that sort of thing. Our initial uh, videos were kind of yellow because these lights were uh, on, so uh, you disabled them, I believe. Uh, yeah, we went through all of them and it was a real pain for the people that set it up because they saw me meticulously go through every single one of them and switch them back off again. <laughs> So, so, so yeah. okay, moving on, here is the video cast set. Uh, well, where we essentially play 4K games. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna take a seat here, actually, It's uh, not your usual seat, but... It's not the usual seat. That's my seat, in fact. Yeah. Um, we have been doing some benchmarking, which we shall be talking about shortly uh, when we discuss our upgraded PCs. But, yeah, I mean, literally, the video cast set is right next to our bench set and we just move the camera about. And that's kind of it. This is our state of the art recording facilities here. Uh, kind of a little basic, but it's always yeah. got the job done. It's all about smoke and mirrors though, isn't it? All I mean, about lighting, really. Uh, yeah, think. that too. Lots yeah. of uh, color post and all these things we do in Premiere. To kind of yeah, to kind of make things look a bit better than they actually are in reality. It's actually a small office, just kind of like a thin sort of strip, really. Let's show that, actually, the kind of length of it, if you walk Yeah, down so this is this is kind of it, really. Um, I'm going to take a view from where you usually film, get a good idea. Um, okay, there we go. Yeah, it's sort of... I'll get out of the way. We did the most with it that we could. <laughs> it uh, really was sort of a, a three-man max office, I guess. I think we could have fitted in easily a couple more people, but... Um, uh, Not with all the boxes, though. We had so <laughs> With all the boxes, yes. There's still a, a surfeit of boxes. Uh, the yeah. console graveyard. Well, what's going on down here? You know, essentially, when we set up the office, we were um, bringing all of our consoles together. 
So yeah, we basically had a surfeit of everything because we replicate everything. So PS3s, a few 360s there, a couple of older PS4s. It pretty much came down to a system of everyone had one console each to work with. Yeah, that's right. My particular favorite in the kind of uh, possibly the worst console redesign ever, the PS3 Super Slim. Yeah, no one really liked that. The, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, the slide over cover which yeah, rattled, yeah. Not good. And um, an Xbox One Xbox, obviously that has been unboxed <laughs> in a video that we did. Yeah. <laughs> that brings on to, us on to that point that we've done so much in this office. Yeah, I mean, uh, PS4 Pro launch, Xbox One X launch, the yeah, whole shooting Yeah, we unboxed match, them right really. there. Um, Switch, um, of course. Switch, of course, yeah. Um, lots of things. PSVR, a uh, huge amount of stuff that we've covered right here in the last couple of years. And uh, 2018 is actually, uh, I guess, slightly downbeat in terms of hardware launches because, um, well, there's no new consoles this year that yeah. we're aware of. Yeah. Maybe some hardware revisions. It's about the ebb and flow though, isn't it? Who Maybe knows? Uh, next year, who knows? Who knows? Uh, well, yeah, next year. So. Let's move on to the desks. Okay, so here we have Dave's position. Unfortunately, Dave is no longer with us. Uh, we are bringing more people on board. Uh, obviously, Alex, the PC guy, you've seen some of his initial stuff. Much more to come there. And we're aiming to do different things uh, further on down the road, if we can find the right people. Uh, in terms of his desk, well, this is a, my old classic 27-inch Dell 1440p monitor which uh, Dave wouldn't use anything else. <laughs> yes, um, uh, everything, uh, we use snowball mics, all of us. Yes, that's right. Uh, for our voiceovers, uh, we've gotten quite used to them. I remember in the uh, early days, we didn't even have pop shields, um, and now we have yeah, upgrade. Yeah, now we have those. That's a, that was a pretty crucial upgrade. Yeah, Five it's, pounds. It's a, there's a bit of resistance to change there. But, um, uh, this have... is our PC. Dave and I share this for uh, pretty much you know most PC testing. Yeah, I think this has got an 8600K in it at the moment. Uh, MSI Gaming Pro Carbon Motherboard Z370. GTX 1080 Ti, so you've been maxing things out. Uh, let's move to your, um, yes, your uh, area. So, um, uh, so yeah, what can you tell me about that PC I've been using for the last few years? Um, well, it's changed a bit. <laughs> it certainly um, has, yeah. You basically gave me the pieces to upgrade it, and I just uh, yeah. sat down and redid the whole thing, but you uh, well, kind of oversaw how all the pieces needed to yeah. be Yeah, so let's um, sort of go into specifics here. Very old chassis, origin case, originally came from an exhibition PC. I think uh, the uh, EGX bought a big bunch of uh, exhibition PCs that came from origin, and uh, it was originally a Sandy Bridge system, 3930K. We moved that onto a 10 core Xeon, but that still wasn't cutting it for 4K video. So we've actually gone for a full Threadripper build here. 1950X CPU, which is 16 cores, 32 threads. 140 millimeter Noctua cooler here. Uh, you don't need a closed loop water solution for it, and you really do for my 16 core system, uh, which we'll talk about in a bit. Uh, we've got 32 gigabytes of G-Skill 3200 megahertz memory in there with that yeah. lovely RGB lighting. Beautifully lit, yeah, you didn't yeah. see that. Which is uh, interesting. Uh, 3200 megahertz is kind of required, I think, for any Ryzen build, especially so with Threadripper though. And um, it's the Samsung uh, modules that tend to work best on a Ryzen or a Threadripper system. That's what G-Skill use. That's what I recommend, and that's what's in your system there. Uh, motherboard, uh, MSI X399 Gaming Pro Carbon AC. Excellent board, everything just works straight away. No compatibility issues, BIOS update, good to go. Uh, inside your system there, this used to have twin OG Titans in it, but now we've got like a GTX 980 Ti there. Again, we need a lot of memory and a lot of GPU power for video editing at 4K just as important as CPU actually for rendering effects and whatnot. And that's kind of where things stand with your system actually. I really like it, I really like Threadripper, and we'll talk about some performance numbers in a moment, but they're all extremely impressive. Now this isn't a 100% fair representation of what I've been seeing for the last two years. No, uh, because this is I very, actually, very, very in, clean. in shame, 
I did actually tidy it up a bit, but you, there is still a bit of detritus down there in the corner. Right. Um, but, uh, you've been, well, you usually have an ultra wide a Predator. Yes, Acer X34 Predator ultra wide. Um, this is an ASUS 4K 32 inch. Uh, it's actually one of the very first 4K monitors. But yeah, the Acer X34, we reviewed it. I think it was one of our very first video reviews, actually. I loved it, so I got one. And, um, well, I've got my PC here, which is my new build, which I've done completely from scratch. Now, you may recall this case. We did a 1080p60 gaming PC, and, um, yeah, uh, I loved the case, so I kept it. Just to sort of open it up, open up the window. Um, Motherboard-wise, uh, we are using MSI X299 Gaming M7 ACK. Uh, I'm using Crucial Ballistic Sport memory there, quad channel, 266600 megahertz. Now this is actually much slower than the G-Skill modules, but you know, memory speed isn't really quite so crucial to an Intel board as it is to a Threadripper. So yeah, that's basically uh, what I'm running here. CPU-wise, I am using the Core i9-7960X. So we have an interesting comparison here. We have 16 Intel cores with 32 threads versus 16 AMD Threadripper cores, 32 threads. Um, slight variances in clock speed. But yeah, I've got the figures right here. <laughs> so your cheat sheet yeah yeah the cheat sheet well we were doing some benchmarks to see you know just how powerful each of the machines are well let's lay it on the line here we're going to start off with the Cinebench scores now i have a much faster single thread performance score here 192 versus 160 uh multi core is actually a fair bit closer i'm on 3188 points and you're on 2990 so bearing in, <laughs> bearing in mind the massive price differential here, and well, let's put that into perspective actually, the CPU in my system is currently on Newegg for $1,703. Wow, it's staggering. Staggering, Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm I mean, literally staggered. I uh, would be perfectly happy to run with what I'm going uh, using for a while, but well, you know, yours is uh, just a bit more deluxe. Well, <laughs> the number one bottleneck in our workflow is encoding, video encoding, and we do it at a really high standard and we do it at 4K. Uh, we use Handbrake uh, to do that We're using H264, X264 encoder actually, and HEVC, X265. And um, yeah, we get some interesting results here. H264 is much easier to encode than HEVC. So let's look at the scores here between our systems. My system can encode this Rise of the Tomb Raider sample clip that we put together at 26.48 frames per second. Not bad for a really high-end encode. I mean, you can obviously dial down the settings, go to real time easily, but we're aiming for quality here. Next, your system does it in 25 Point one four. So you're literally like 1.3 frames per second behind me. Now that is interesting. Uh, again, it shows the kind of very close parity between the systems, but you're not actually maxing the CPU with H.264, which I found intriguing. HEVC though is, is massively difficult to do in software and it takes ages. And my system will encode that Rise of the Tomb Raider clip at 14.79 frames per second. And here's where things get a bit interesting. Your system only 10.4. Now the reason here is because uh, the one kind of disadvantage that Ryzen, that Threadripper has, is that it's AVX performance, AVX instructions on the CPU, they are not uh, implemented quite as exhaustively as they are on Intel. So yeah, HEVC encoding does leverage that. I get a big, big advantage there. It's pretty much just shy of 40% there on encoding speeds. But, you know, the vast majority of applications out there, and certainly when you're editing in Premiere and whatnot, they aren't using AVX instructions. And again, you know, I just kind of feel a bit blown away by how much Threadripper is delivering at the high end. Okay then, so obviously these are not the only high end desktop chips available. Um, John is using a Core i9-7900X, 10 cores, 20 threads. I've got the scores for that. Uh, versus Tom's 16 core Threadripper, 
HEVC is 9.3 frames per second versus 10.37. So even though it's lost six cores and 12 threads, it's, it's you know, about 10% slower. H.264 though, 23.76 frames per second versus 25.14. So we have a chip there that is more expensive than Threadripper, but Threadripper is faster in both cases, even though there is that huge core differential. And um, you might have noticed actually when we were on the video cast set that we were doing some benchmarking there with another AMD PC. Actually, let's return to that. Uh, I'll park myself here. Okay. So, yes, the Threadripper 1920X is in that particular system there. And uh, let's have a look at the scores there. Single core Cinebench is only 130, so it's way weaker. And multi core score 2377. Now, that is actually still faster than the 7900X in John's PC. However, our video encoding scores are universally slower. So, H.264, 23.76 versus 19.86 in favor of the Intel chip. HEVC is 9.3 frames per second on the 7900X versus 8.13 on the Threadripper. Now, the thing about the Threadripper is, you know, it's still handing in relatively decent performance and uh, but that chip is only at the moment on new egg 667 dollars so you pay for what you get really i have uh, perhaps inevitably the most powerful system of the bunch but in terms of real life applications where those 16 cores and 32 threads are better than tom's it's hevc encoding and not much else so that is kind of curious right yeah i mean if you were looking to set up your own uh, say youtube channel or something like that and you want to get into 4k encoding you know this is uh this pc may be sort of the sort of spec you'd be looking at um threadripper yeah i mean threadripper is a really good production workhorse i'm finding but uh, what i'll also say is that ryzen uh ryzen uh, 8 core 1700 yeah there's a lot of bang for buck on the Ryzen. yeah i mean side. you know this processor is uh, 667 dollars but you know an 8 core ryzen you know it'll be around half that, if not, if not more so, if not lower than that. And of course you can overclock and the boards will be cheaper. The thing about a high-end desktop is that motherboards, yeah, they are kind of quite expensive. So yeah, I mean, if you're looking to get into 4K video, uh, Ryzen would be my go-to uh, sort of setup for price versus performance. But if you're looking for extra power, if you're looking to go to the high-end, uh, Threadripper in terms of price versus performance, I can't really fault it. It's just a pretty stunning product in my view. So there we go, the Digital Foundry office tour, a kind of uh, lap of honor in this place before we leave. Uh, what do you reckon, Tom? Yeah, it's been a good uh, two and a half years. I remember moving in and we didn't know how to do voiceovers really, uh, appear on camera. Uh, yeah. We learned an awful lot on the job and uh, Definitely, I, I, you know, I look back and I cringe at some of the stuff I was doing back then and looking yeah. at it now, I feel a lot better about where we are. So. I'm going to be uh, editing this video, so I might well be putting in some choice cutaways at that point. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think there's embarrassment all around early on and we kind of went in thinking, hey, how difficult can this be? And the answer was extremely difficult and we're still learning all of the time. Okay, so I think we're going to leave things there. I hope you enjoyed this kind of impromptu lo-fi look at uh, the way we work and the equipment that we use and maybe if you're looking to get into some 4k video development yourself in the gaming area uh, some good tips here on the sort of kit that you should be using but that's all from us for now thanks for watching and yes do please consider supporting the digital foundry patreon in order to see everything that we do all of that effort that we put into getting pristine 4k video it's all there, everyone can access it. But I think that's all for now, really. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs>